Tennessee's At Home Learning Series for Literacy. Today's lesson is for all our third graders out there, although all children are welcome to tune in. This lesson is the fifth in our series. If you didn't see our previous lesson, you can find it on the Tennessee Department of Education website at www.tn.gov backslash education. My name is Miss Copeland and I'm a third grade teacher at Venus Stewart Elementary in Gallatin, Tennessee. I'm so excited to be your teacher for this lesson. Welcome to my classroom. I am missing the students in my own classroom. Every day I want to share a note with one student. Today's note is for Cameron. Cameron, I miss getting to see you every day. You have a kind heart and a smile that lights up the room. You keep us all laughing. You are a leader. I hope you are doing well. From Ms. Copeland. Welcome back to our third grade read aloud series of The Wind in the Willows. In our last lesson, we thought about how Mole's perspective of the wild wood changed. I hoped you enjoyed making the warning poster about the wild wood from Mole's perspective. We have been learning about the central message. Do you remember what a central message is? Central message is a broad idea that comes up many times. Or you could say it is the moral or lesson that the character learns and that you can learn from the text. Central message is a literary tool. What central messages have we heard thus far in The Wind in the Willows? Say them out loud. We've heard two. So far we have heard that friends are loyal and that you should take responsibility for your actions. Today, we will be introduced to another central message about hospitality. Hospitality is treating guests well and being warm, welcoming, and friendly toward them. As a hospitable person is someone who is very attentive to their guests' or friends' needs. This means they always make sure that their guests or friends are comfortable and have everything they need, often anticipating ahead of time what those things may be. Can you think of any examples of hospitality demonstrated in the story thus far? Try standing up and saying at least two. I thought of several. Rat shares his boat and picnic lunch with Mole. Rat invites Mole into his home to spend the night after the rowing incident. He makes a nice fire, they have a cheerful meal, and Rat makes Mole feel right at home. Toad also displays hospitality by inviting Rat and Mole into his caravan and sharing his food and beds with them. All these are examples of hospitality. Before we start reading, there are a few words we should review. The first word is eager. What's this word? Eager. Eager is an adjective. Eager means wanting to do or have something very much. Here is an example of that word in a sentence. The boy was eager to play his video game after completing his chores. Another word is dimly. What is this word? Dimly. Dimly is an adverb. Dimly means not bright or clear. Here is an example of that word in a sentence. The room was dimly lit, which made it hard to find anything. The last word is etiquette. What's that word? Etiquette. Etiquette is a noun. Etiquette means to have good manners. Here is an example of that word in a sentence. The children displayed etiquette by saying please and thank you. Hmm, okay, let's look at our picture. Where were we when we finished our last read aloud? Look at the details in this image. 
Remember, Mole and Rat are at Mr. Badger's front door. They have just pulled on the bell pull. Let's see if we can find Mr. Badger's house on the map. So here was Mole's house. Here's the wild wood. And then here is Badger's house. I am wondering, will Mr. Badger be home? Will Mr. Badger show hospitality to Rat and Mole? Let's find out. We will be adding a new character, so be sure you have a new piece of paper and a pencil for the characteristics we learn about Badger. Rat and Mole waited patiently for what seemed a very long time. At last, there was a noise of a bolt sliding back, and then the door opened a few inches. Who is it? said a rather gruff voice. Oh, Badger, cried the rat. It's me, Rat, and my friend Mole, and we've lost our way in the snow. What, Ratty, my dear little man, exclaimed the Badger. Come along in, both of you. The two animals tumbled over each other in their eagerness to get inside. The badger, who wore a long dressing gown, carried a flat candlestick in his paw. This is not the sort of night for animals to be out, he said paternally. But come into the kitchen. There's a fire there and supper too. He shuffled on in front of them and they followed him down a long gloomy passage into a central hall. Once there, they could dimly see other long tunnel-like passages branching off in various directions. But there were doors in the hall as well. One of these, the badger flung open, and at once they found themselves in a large firelit kitchen. The floor was well-worn red brick, and on, one, and on the wide hearth burned a fire of logs. A couple of high-backed settles, which is a bench, binges, were facing each other on either side of the fire. In the middle of the room, there stood a long table with benches on either side. Let's pause our story for a moment. Take a moment to think about what you have learned about Mr. Badger. Jot down your thoughts on our new character with Mr. Badger's name. Pause the video if you need more time to think. Look at the picture. Can you find the settle? Remember, that was the bench, so here they are sitting on the settle. The kindly badger guided them to one of the settles and bade them remove their wet coats and boots. Then he fetched them dressing gowns and slippers. He bathed the mole's shin with warm water and dressed the cut. When they were thoroughly warm, the badger summoned them to the table to eat a delicious meal. As they dined, the badger sat in his armchair at the head of the table and listened as the animals told their story. When supper was finished, the badger said heartily, Now then, tell us the news from your part of the world. How's old Toad going on? Oh, from bad to worse, said the rat gravely. Another smash up. How many has he had? inquired the badger gloomily. Smashes or machines? asked the rat. Oh, well, after all, it's the same thing with Toad. This is the seventh. He's been in the hospital three times, put in the mole. And as for the fines he's had to pay, it's simply awful to think of. Yes, and that's part of the trouble, continued the rat. Toad's rich, we all know, but he's not a millionaire. He'll either be killed or ruined. Badger. We're his friends. Oughtn't we do something? Ruined here means Toad will lose all his money. Badger thought for a while. Now look here, he said at last. Of course you know I can't do anything now. His two friends agreed, quite understanding his point. No animal, according to the rules of animal etiquette, is ever expected to do anything heroic after, during the off-season of winter. Remember, etiquette means having good manners. 
In other words, animals with good manners do not expect each other to help or act like heroes during the harsh winter season because certain animals, like the badger, hibernate during the winter. Very well then, continued the badger, but when once the year has really turned, if not before, you know. Both animals nodded gravely. They knew. Well then, went on the badger, then we'll bring Toad back to reason. Well, you're asleep, rat. Not me, said the rat, waking up with a jerk. He's been asleep two or three times since supper, said the mole, laughing. He himself was feeling quite lively. Badger's howl suited him and made him feel at home. Whereas the rat, who slept every night in a bedroom beside a river, natu naturally felt the atmosphere quite oppressive. Well, it's time we were all in bed, said the badger, getting up and fetching flat candlesticks. Come along, you two, and I'll show you to your quarters and take your time tomorrow morning. Breakfast at any hour you please. He conducted the two animals to a long room with two little white beds in it. Moments later, the two white beds contained one mole and one rat. Let's pause our story here. Take a moment to add thoughts to Mr. Badger's paper. If you learned something new about mole and rat, you could add that to their papers too. Pause the video if you need more time to think. The two tired animals came down to breakfast very late the next morning. When they did emerge, they found a bright fire burning in the kitchen and two young hedgehogs sitting on a bench at the table eating oatmeal. Where have you two youngsters come from? said the rat pleasantly. Lost your way in the snow? Yes, sir, said the elder of the two hedgehogs. Me and little Billy here. We was trying to find our way to school and we lost ourselves. At last, we found Mr. Badger's back door. I understand, said the rat, cutting himself some rashers from a side of bacon, while the mole dropped some eggs into a saucepan. And what's the weather like outside? Oh, terrible bad, sir, said the hedgehog. Where's Mr. Badger, asked the mole. The master's gone into his study, sir, replied the hedgehog, and he said as how he was going to be particularly busy this morning, and on no account was he to be disturbed. This explanation, of course, was thoroughly understood. The animals well knew that Badger, having eaten a hearty breakfast, had retired to his study. Once there, he had settled himself in an armchair and was being busy in the usual way at this time of year. Let's pause and think together for a moment. The author tells us that Mr. Badger retired to his study and was busy in the usual way at this time of year. What do you think this means? Animals in nature, such as badgers, are less active in the winter because they hibernate. So, Badger is joking that he will be busy sleeping. Before we began reading, I told you I was wondering if Mr. Badger would show hospitality. I think my answer would be yes. What evidence from this section might I use to support my answer? Jot your evidence on Mr. Badger's page. I think I could use that Mr. Badger had a cozy fire going and he made the two hedgehogs a breakfast of oatmeal as my evidence to support that Mr. Badger is hospitable. The front doorbell clanged loudly and the rat sent Billy, the smaller hedgehog, to see who it might be. Presently, Billy returned with the otter. Thought I should find you here, said the otter. They were all in a great state of alarm along the riverbank when you didn't return home last night. But I knew that when people were in any fix, they went to Badger. My, it was fine coming through the snow as the red sun was rising. I was about halfway when I came across a rabbit sitting on a stump. He told me that Mole had been seen in the wild wood last night.
Weren't you at all er, nervous? asked the mole. Nervous, the otter showed a gleaming set of strong white teeth as he laughed. Never. Here, mole, fry me some slices of ham. I'm frightfully hungry. So the mole, having cut slices of ham, set the hedgehogs to fry it and returned to his own breakfast while the otter and the rat chatted about the riverbank. A plate of fried ham had just been cleared and sent back for more when the badger entered. He greeted them all. It must be getting on for luncheon time, he remarked to the otter. You must be hungry. Indeed, replied the otter. The sight of these greedy young hedgehogs stuffing themselves makes me feel famished. The hedgehogs looked timidly up at Mr. Badger, but were too shy to say anything. Here, you two youngsters, be off home, said the badger kindly. I'll send someone with you to show the way. Let's pause and think together for a moment. Think for a second about thoughts you could add to Mr. Badger's paper. Was there any additional evidence that supports him being hospitable to others? Pause the video if you need more time to think. If I were creating a Mr. Badger paper, I would add the line, but I knew that when people were in any fix, they went to Badger, because it lets me know that others relied on Mr. Badger. Presently, the others sat down to luncheon together. The mole found himself placed next to Mr. Badger, and so took the opportunity to tell Badger how comfortable and home-like it all felt to him. Once well underground, he said, you know exactly where you are. The badger simply beamed at him. There's no security or peace except underground. The mole agreed, and the badger, in consequence, got very friendly with him. When lunch is over, he said, I'll take you around this little place of mine. After luncheon, the badger lighted a lantern and bade the mole follow him. Crossing the hall, they passed down one of the principal tunnels, and the wavering light of the lantern gave glimpses on either side of rooms, both large and small. The mole was staggering at the size. How on earth, badger, he said at last, did you ever find time and strength to do all this? It's astonishing. It would be astonishing, said the badger simply, if I had done it. But as a matter of fact, I did none of it. You see, long ago, on the spot where the wild wood stands now, there was a city, a city of people. Here, where, they, where we are standing, they lived. They were a powerful people and great builders. But what has become of them all? asked the mole. Who can tell, said the badger. People come, they stay for a while, and they go. But we remain. There were badgers here long before that same city ever came to be. And now there are badgers here again. When they got back to the kitchen, they found the rat walking up and down. <coughs> Excuse me. The underground atmosphere was getting on his nerves. Come along, Mole, he said as soon as he caught sight of them. We must get off while it's daylight. It'll be all right, my fine fellow, said the otter. I'm coming along with you. And if there is a head that needs to be punched, you can confidently rely upon me to punch it. You really needn't fret, Ratty, added the badger. My passages run further than you think. When you are ready to go, you shall leave by one of my shortcuts. Before long, the badger led the way along a damp tunnel that wound and dipped for a weary distance. At last, daylight began to show itself through tangled growth near the mouth of the passage. The badger, bidding them goodbye, pushed them hurriedly through the opening and hastily made good again the creepers and brushwood that surrounded it. Creepers are vines, and brushwood is a collection of broken branches and twigs that Badger uses. He uses them to hide the opening to his home. That is the end of our story today. 
Take a moment to add thoughts to Mr. Badger's paper. Was there any additional evidence that supports him being hospitable to others? Pause the video if you need more time to think. Let's think more about today's visit with Mr. Badger. From whose perspective is the story told? It is told from Mole's perspective. What do you think is the central message about hospitality? I think the central message is hospitality is a way to show kindness to others. When does the central message, hospitality is a way to show kindness to others, come up in today's read aloud? Take a piece of paper and jot down your thoughts. I was thinking the author uses Mr. Badger's actions to support the central message about hospitality. Mr. Badger welcomes Rat and Mole into his home very late at night. He brings them dry, warm clothes. He bandages Mole's leg. He conducts Mole and Rat to sleep in his guest beds. And he welcomes and feeds two hedgehogs that have become lost in the snow. Now that Mole and Rat have finished visiting with Mr. Badger, they will need to write him a thank you note for his hospitality. Think about our central message of hospitality is a way to show kindness to others. And on your own today, I want you to write a thank you note from the perspective, pretending you are mole or rat, and thanking Mr. Badger for his hospitality and for his kindness. Be sure in your thank you letter to include specific examples of his hospitality from the story. I also hear that Mr. Badger loves to have drawings on his refrigerator. You might consider including a drawing in your note. Boys and girls, I enjoyed reading with you today. Thank you for inviting me into your home. I look forward to seeing you again in our next lesson in Tennessee's At Home Learning Series. Goodbye, and I'll see you next week. Hello, I'm Maria Lee. First Lady of Tennessee, and I'm so glad you're here. This has been an unprecedented time for our state and our country. I'm so proud to see how Tennesseans are coming together to serve and lift each other up in the midst of challenges. Each of us has a role to play, including you, our students. Right now, your school buildings may be closed, but there are many opportunities to keep learning. And we are so grateful for the partnership of PBS in bringing this program directly to you as one more way to keep us learning and growing together during this time. I want to also give a special thank you to all of the teachers who helped make this possible. We could not do it without them. Most of all, thank you for joining us. The value parents place on reading makes a big difference in a child's reading and language development. You don't have to be a teacher or a great reader to create and nurture a love of reading in your child. It's beyond words on a page. It's about using stories to engage your child in the world around them. Start early because language development begins at birth. Exposing children to books early enriches their daily lives and builds strong thinkers. Just having books in the home, no matter your comfort level in reading aloud, can help a child grow to love reading and learning. Let your baby touch, feel, and even chew on the books. Bah, said Gregory unhappily. Let me see your unhappy face. Ask your child questions about the book and experiences the characters are having. Use the pictures to spark meaningful, engaging conversation, relating pictures to things in the child's day-to-day -day routine. Share the joy of books by bringing the story to life. Read with enthusiasm and energy in any language. Try using different voices for different characters. Is that we're all here together. Make up a funny story using the pictures or act out characters and sounds animals make. Hey. Encourage your child to copy you and make his or her own noises. 
That's good. That's good. And most of all, reading with children and exposing them to books from the moment they're born instills an everlasting love of reading and learning that they'll have for the rest of their lives. What's up, all you crazy Tennesseans? It's me, Coach Wood again. Let's get up, get off your couch, let's get moving, all right? I got toilet paper in my hand. If you want to grab some toilet paper, go ahead. Join in on the fun. Let's just run in place for a minute, all right? We're just running through the neighborhood. What's up, man? Whoa, keep your distance. Good to see you. What's up? Woo! Go a little faster. Oh, I'm going. I'm running in my garage with toilet paper in my hand. Remember, it's important to get off that couch. Video games are fun, TV's fun, but you got to get up and move. Look it, we're moving with toilet paper. You can do it too. Keep moving, keep moving. Shake it off. Shake it off, shake it off. Hashtag Taylor Swift, here we go. Whew. Let's do some jumping jacks. Remember, pencil, X, pencil, X. Super simple. Let's get 10 in there, ready? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo! Here we go. Last thing, USA, baby. USA, USA. Here we go. Last thing, we're gonna do some of my favorite. If you've watched my videos on YouTube, these are called star jumps. All right, touch the ground, jump up, star. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Five, five more. One. Two, three, four, come on, five, Woo. shake it off. Woo. See, look at that. We haven't been working out for even two minutes. I'm already breathing hard. I know you're breathing hard. You guys are doing great. Keep it up at home, keep up all the awesome work, and follow me at youtube.com slash C slash Coach Wood. Check out my other videos. Peace. Peace.